Okay, guys. Um, so I know we did this for lab meeting, but I'm just going to record this because honestly, there's a lot of times we go through lab meeting and I have no clue what we talked about about a week later. So this will be this will be good for us to just have this on file. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how to use Docker, how to make an image and stuff like that. Hopefully this will be more informative than the lab meeting was. Um, so I think we all, you need a wget for this if you want to try it yourself. Um, if you're on a Mac, I would just uh, suggest installing Brew anyways. Okay, so what is Docker? Um, and I guess also Singularity. So it's Singularity and Docker are two different programs that essentially allow you to create virtual computers on your computer that can be pre-configured in any way um, so that you can basically make sure that when somebody runs your program, they have all the prerequisites already baked in. You don't have to worry about what version of their operating system they're running. You don't have to worry about what version of programs they have. You don't have to worry about certain programs that they have installed that you don't know about interfering with the programs you want to run. So first of all, it allows you just basically, it's the equivalent of you buying a laptop, setting it up perfectly the way you want it, and then handing it to a person to run your program on. Um, and the other advantage of it is a security thing. So when you have, um, when you're working inside of these virtual computers, almost there's, there is ways to get out, but 99.9999% of people don't know how to do it. In fact, it's very hard to tell when you're working inside a virtual computer versus when you're working on a real computer. So, um, it allows you to run programs that may have a little bit of a risk of somebody being able to get on your computer. And if they mess anything up, you basically just restart it and it goes back to the original configuration. You don't say they were to try and encrypt all your information. It would just encrypt whatever's inside there. And then when you shut it down, that computer, it's like throwing out that laptop and starting over again with a new laptop. So it allows uh, you to basically have a secure environment to run programs in. Um, for us, we're more using it for the first situation where everything's pre-configured. So when I put these on CHPC, I won't have to worry about what happens when CHPC updates a program or decides that a program's too old and deletes it. Essentially, it'll be my own personal computer just running using the hardware of CHPC. And that's kind of the beauty of Docker. Um, so if you're on a Mac, uh, setting up Docker is pretty easy. You just install it off their web page. Same thing on a Windows. Um, there used to be an issue where you could only run Windows uh, virtual machines on Windows and Linux virtual machines on Linux or Unix operating systems like Macs. But the nice thing that we have going on here is that Windows now has a virtual um, Linux machine that runs on uh, here. So I can run Docker on it and set up Docker virtual machines for Linux operating systems. So these will run on CHPC. So yeah, if you're on a Windows computer and you're having, you want to set this up, talk to me. But let's get started. Okay, so let's see here. Let's just get rid of all of our previous stuff that we don't don't need. I gotta clean this out real quick. All right, so I got this cleaned up. So the first thing I've got over here, I'll put this up with this, is we're just going to CD to our home directory, and we're going to make a 
directory called Docker. And we're going to CD into that directory. There's nothing in here because we just made it. And we're going to make a directory called echo chamber. Again, I was going to make it do a bunch of echo stuff, but kind of changed my plan. So we're inside this directory called echo chamber. And I am going to make a little file. A file, and I'm just going to have it um, run a program. And the program's going to say hello, dollar sign user. So whatever the user's name is defined as, it's going to say I have a, I'm a program. You moved into your container. The current home directory is dollar sign home, and my current location is whatever the working directory is. And then it will write a file called taco.txt and move it up a directory. So we'll just see what happens when we run this thing. Okay. Okay. And then we are, for Docker, you need to make a Docker file. And what a Docker file does is it tells the virtual machine how to be built. So we're going to build our virtual machine here. And you have to spell this exactly right, Docker file, uppercase D. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the line from Ubuntu 16.04. So this tells it to use an image that somebody already built of the Ubuntu operating system. And then we're going to say run this command, make directory slash home slash user. And then I'm going to tell it, okay, you're also making, you're going to start Whenever somebody enters this uh, container, they're going to enter at that location. And then also we're going to tell it, go ahead and move all the files that are in the build directory, which is that echo chamber thing, move those into the container. Okay, so we save this file. Zoom made it so that this is not quite shaped right. Let's right. Hopefully I'll fix it. Okay, so here we are in our Docker folder. We've got our folder called echo chamber in there. And now we're going to tell Docker to build the program. So here's the command. It's so Docker is the program, and we're saying Docker build dash t is the tag that we're adding to this. So it's going to be called echo test, and then we're telling it, okay, build it using all the files in this folder called echo chamber. All right, and that that's how fast it builds. So it technically cheats. Technically, that was already uh, built somewhere else, and we just grabbed it. But now we can do things like run um, run things in it. So what we just did is we built what's called an image. An image is like the base version of what of the computer that we give people to run. So every time that you run this, you're going to make a copy of that base image and work inside of the virtual computer that's made from that copy. Um, and so anything that happens inside of that copy, which is now called a container, is contained in the container. And unless you do something special, which we'll talk about, nothing happens outside of that. Um, so unless you edit the image, it doesn't get saved. So let's, let's go ahead and mess around with this image and make some containers. So the way you can do stuff Inside a container, as you now say docker run, and you see we created echo test latest. So you can make multiple modifications to echo test and save them as different versions. So we're just going to, if, if you don't specify what version, though, it always uses the latest tagged one. So we can say docker run the image echo test. And let's just say, let's just run ls on it. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to fire up the computer, go to the working directory we set, which is slash home slash user, 
and then it's just going to show us what's in there <clears throat> and then exit. So there we go. So it's got Docker file and it's got a file.sh. So that was, that was pretty easy. So let's have it run our a file.sh. So we'll say Docker run echo test L, oh, sorry, bash a file.sh. Okay, so it says hello. Guess we don't have a username in there. It says I'm a programmer and you moved into your container. Current directory is root. Ah, the home directory is root and it says my current location is slash home slash user. And it says moving docker.txt to the same place doesn't make any sense. So there you go. So it ran it and then it exited because if we look here, we're outside of the container. Um, so you could you could do something like this. So say we said docker run echo test remove a file dot sh. Oh, I spelled echo test. I put a space in there. All right. So we did that. But now if we run echo test with ls a file is still going to be there because we deleted it in the container, but the container essentially gets thrown out, which is not necessarily true. So if we uh, if we use this thing, so we say docker container ls a, this will show us all the containers. So once the containers are, once you've stopped using them, they remain uh, available for you to do stuff with. Um, so in this case, you can see all the different commands we've run and how long ago we ran them. So we ran ls, we ran bash a file, we removed it. But let's see here, let's expand this out a little bit. Um, each time it makes a container, it gives it one of these weird two name things. So Nati, I don't even know what that word is. Sarp Agnes, Dazzling Euler. Dreamy something. Um, but basically, what you what this is doing is it saves them, so you can kind of go back in and modify them. But every time you run this run command, you are starting a new container, and whatever happened in the previous container doesn't affect you. We're always going back to the original image. Okay, so. That's good and all, but say we like actually run a program, like say we want to run Bowtie and create uh, an Alina file, and then we obviously want to save the BAM file that comes out. So it doesn't do us any good if that BAM file stays in the container and then gets thrown out when we're finished with the container. So I'm going to show you how to create um, a shared directory that allows you to kind of create a bridge from your computer over to the container. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a directory called shared. All right. Um, so we'll just say shared equals real. So I'm just assigning this to a variable. So it gives us so I've got this variable called shared. And this is important because you've got to give it the full path to the file. Otherwise, it creates this weird kind of uh, container folder that can be shared between containers, but doesn't actually go to a real place on your computer. But if you, here, so if we run this next command here, um, here, let's first, let's just hop into this shared folder and we'll say echo I was made on the real computer. Oops, let's write that out to a file that's called host.txt. So there's a file called host.txt there. Now, when, if we want to work inside the Docker container, so let's do this. So now we'll say docker run. Okay, just like we did before, but we'll add one extra flag here, the dash V flag. And that's where we tell it, we want to take this folder called shared 
and I want you to take it and put it inside the container at home slash user slash shared. Okay. And so now we say, okay, image is echo test. And I want you to do ls shared. And you can see, okay, inside there is a file called host.txt. Now, what if we did this? Echo, I was in a container, how to shared container.txt. All right, now if we go to our shared file, oh, look, now we've got our file we just made and it survived the container being thrown out. So this is, this is super useful. So another thing you can do is, it's kind of a pain to try and run one command at a time. If say you might wanna do other things inside the container like to further configure it, you can go in and work on it interactively. So this is, so the way we've been using it is kind of like if you're on King's Peak and use the sbatch command, essentially it queues it up, it tosses it into the container, lets it run, and then just closes the container when it's done. Whereas what we're about to do is I'm going to show you how to interactively work in the container. So this is like logging into a node interactively on King's Peak with the srni command. So the only thing we need to modify, so we don't need to give it a command after this, and after run, we do dash IT. So now you'll see my user prompt changed. So we'll just hit clear. And we're in that home user thing. So we can go into that shared folder. We can cap both of these files and see them. We can modify them. So we can say echo, I am interactive, interactive.txt. Okay, we can go up one, we can say echo, I will go away, out to temp, dot text. So you can see there's all this stuff. In fact, I can even say, let's say, let's do remove a file, let's remove the Docker file. Like, let's just mess stuff up. Let's go up to the root directory and remove lib. Like this would be, this would be a really bad thing to do. See, look, ls doesn't work anymore. But now if I do exit, uh, and then we go back in, ls is working again. All our files that are important are back. So this is really nice because people can go in, they can interactively do stuff, and they can just wreck the place. And all they have to do is restart it, and everything's kind of fixed. So this is one of the important powers of containers right here. All right, um, so let's exit back out of it. Let's go to shared. You can see the interactive files there. So the only thing you gotta be careful about is not deleting files in your shared container. So I suggest you did that if you're doing anything with shared uh, folders, I would probably either copy them in or hard link them in. I would never put your only copy of that file in there because again, that's the only thing that any changes will be permanent on. All right, so one issue if you're doing this on um, a Linux operating system is if we look at who owns the file I made when I was logged in uh, interactively, it was made by the root user. And so if you don't have root access when you're working on a uh, computer and you create a folder, it's very hard to get rid of that. So if I say remove interactive.txt, oh weird, it went away. I guess I'm the boss of my own computer. Um, but in other situations, it can be very difficult for you guys to remove stuff. So like this is one of the reasons that CHPC does not like uh, Docker and won't let you run it on CHPC because they have create root files and that can allow malicious programs to actually kind of export files with much higher privileges than they're supposed to have that can actually ruin things on the real computer. So, okay, I'm just going to end this tutorial here. So this is just a basic 
how to run uh, Docker um, and kind of an introduction to it. And I will make another video kind of on the pipeline part showing you how to use um, Docker to create a pipeline. All right, see ya. Ha <laughs> ha.